What's up everybody, this is John from Coding Addict and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover cool vanilla JS topics that might come in handy while building various web apps. And our today's topic is going to be timestamps. While working on one of the node projects, I had to utilize timestamps. And once I was done, I realized that it would be a great addition to this series as well. Before we begin, let me just warn you that this video will consist of quite a few console logs. And the reason why you can see all my logs directly in a document is because I'm using extension by the name of QOKA.js. So if you also want to have the same functionality, just go to extensions, look for QOKA one, this one over here, install it, follow the docs, and you'll be in good shape. Now, as you know, in JavaScript, we have date object, correct? And if we run new date, we're going to get a bunch of useful info, which is going to look something like this. Now, if we need more info, like say date or month, we just need to run a few more methods, correct? But what's also super nifty that we can get Unix time, which essentially is the amount of time elapsed since midnight, January 1st, 1970. And the first gotcha that it is measured in milliseconds. And small hint, one second consists of 1000 milliseconds. Now, if you have worked with set timeout, that's the second argument that we're passing in. This is in milliseconds. And we have three ways how we can get the timestamps. We can go with date.now and notice how we don't have to use the new. And then we also have new date, get time, and value off. And these ones will make a little bit more sense later once we work on the third example. A few more things that I would like to mention. First, notice how these numbers are quite huge, correct? And the reason for that is because this is in milliseconds. So imagine the amount of time that has elapsed since 1970, and that is measured in milliseconds. Now, also notice something interesting where all of these values are essentially the same because they run one after another, correct? But if I have a set timeout here, and in it, I go with data now. So essentially, I get the timestamps. This value will be by 1000 bigger. Why? Well, because I run set timeout in one second in 1000 milliseconds. So if I take a look at these numbers, notice this is going to be three. But here it is four. And where I'm going with this, that the number will always be bigger. So let's say if you log this yesterday, it's going to be smaller than it is today. Hopefully that is clear. And what's also really, really cool and handy about the timestamps, that it is a absolute value, unlike when we get back new date, which is super useful when we need to make some kind of calculations, which we're going to do over here, when we need to find difference between dates. Now, as far as the use cases, I can show you three. Now, the first one probably is going to be a little bit silly. But essentially, if I have some kind of learning app, and if I don't want to install some kind of package that provides me unique IDs, I just go with date now. How is that going to look like? Well, normally, it's done through some kind of input. But let me just showcase in a code where imagine you have a people array. So for time being, it is an empty array. And then I'm just going to add a object to it. I'll say people is equal, then I'll use spread operator, people, and then let's just add an ID. Here in the object, I'll say ID date dot now. So that's going to be the value. And then let's also add name and Peter. And if I set up a set timeout, again, normally, that's going to be another item that's added later using some kind of form. But in this case, just to simulate that we're going to go with set timeout will pass in the callback function. And let's say in one second, I'm going to add one more item. So let me go over here. And the same deal they dot now, instead of Peter, it's going to be john. And if I log this, then you'll see in the console that we have both that we have the Peter, this is going to be ID. 
And of course, this will be a unique ID as well. Again, somewhat silly example, but I still find it useful where I don't have to download the package and worry about the versions and all that. Now, another thing that we can do, we can create date with timestamps. So we already know that, yeah, we can go with new date. And if you want to pass in some future date, you can also pass in the year, the month and all that. But what's also super cool is that we can go with new date and then pass in the timestamps. So in this case, let me check this one out. So this will be, let's say today, I'll copy the value, I'll scroll down. And we're going to go here with log, and then new date, and then I'll pass in the value. And then notice how this again will spit me back the value for that time. So maybe if I change this around, and if I'll say that this will be nine, then this will be a different date. Make sense? So now this one is September 29th. Now, why is this very useful? Well, because there's going to be some times when we want to make some kind of calculations. So for example, I want to set up a expiry date. This is exactly what we did in Node project, where I want to set up a cookie that will expire in one day. Now how we can do that? Well, first we can go with now. So some kind of variable is going to be equal to date dot. Now let's invoke it. Then let's set up a future date. So let's say const here. And then if we go with future date is equal to new date, then we'll pass in now. So whatever is date dot now, and keep in mind that yes, you can pass it here directly. So I add here now and as far as setting up the future date, I can just go with plus, And then I can add the amount of timestamps. Now, in my case, I'm going to add 60,000. Why? Well, because one second is 1000 milliseconds. And then if I multiply this by 60, that's going to be one minute. And now if I console log both the now and future date, you'll see that again, the value is going to be bigger by one minute. So let's go here, console log, future date, let's copy and paste. And then let's go with new date, new date. And what you'll see is that this value will be bigger by one minute for the future date. And this is exactly what we did in the node project, where I had to set up a cookie. And on a cookie, we have expires property. So essentially, this sets it up when the cookie expires. And we went with new date, then I looked for the current timestamps. And then I just did a little bit of math, where I calculated how many milliseconds are in one day, and just added it to date dot now. And this gives me expiration one day from the time when the cookie was created. And the last example is going to be finding a difference between two dates. And if you worked on my vanilla JS project, you probably worked on this one as well, where essentially we have some kind of giveaway. And we just have a counter here. So the giveaway will end in 10 days. And effectively, we set up two dates, we calculate the timestamps, and then we find the difference. Now, how is that going to look like? It's going to look something like this, where we go with const first date is equal to a new date. So we set up some kind of value. And then let's set up a second date. So const second and date is equal to new date. And now let's set up some date in the future. So if I take a look at my current one, it is September 27, 19, or I'm sorry, 2021. So let's go here with 2021. Then as far as the month, I'm going to go with eight because we need to remember that when it comes to JavaScript, this is going to be zero based. So even though normally September is the ninth month, in this case, we need to go with eight. And as far as the date, I'm going to go with 28. So I create this one. And then in order to get timestamps, we are not running date dot now because this will give us the current ones. What I'm looking for here is the result and then get time. Now, if you want, you can use value off as well. But in my case, I'm going to go here with const and then first value is equal to first date dot. And then let's go with get time. Let's invoke it, copy and paste. And let's set up a second one, second value. 
second date, second date, and then yes, we'll log both of them first. So first value, copy and paste. And then we also want to set up the second one the same way. So second value. And then again, the second value will be bigger. Why? Because this is a time already in the future. Correct. And then once we have all of this in place, what we can do, we can find the difference between the days, because these are nice numbers that we can use, correct? So we wouldn't be able to do this one with new date and pass in this one and then minus the new date. That's not going to work. But with these values, with these absolute values, we can definitely do so. So we can go with const and then time difference. Let me scroll down just so we have a little bit more room. So time difference is equal to second value since that's going to be bigger. Now you can use the absolute as well, the math absolute, but in this case, I'm going to go with biggest value, second value minus the first value. And then this is going to give me a time difference. And then as far as calculating them, well, first, let me just log that this is going to be a time difference here. And we just need to remember that again, one second is 1000 milliseconds. So for example, if I want to calculate the amount of minutes that is in between these two dates, what I want to do is come up with some kind of variable minutes in this case, then time difference, and then we want to divide. And then I want to look for that minute value in what in milliseconds, correct? So if one second has 1000 milliseconds, I go here with 1000. And then how many seconds are in a minute? Well, that is 60, correct? At least where I live. So once we calculate that, and once we log minutes, this is going to give us the minutes between the days. Now, it does make sense to use some kind of math round operation, whether you want to go with seal, whether you want to go with floor, or you simply want to round them. That totally makes sense because you probably don't want to showcase 839 minutes dot something. And of course, you can also calculate here the hours and all that. So you actually have the time that makes sense. For example, in this case, we have 28 minutes. And similarly, we can calculate the hours, we can calculate the days and all that. Now I'm not going to do all that in this video, but just to showcase with hours, going to look something like this, where we go with time difference, divided, and then again, we basically take the same value here, we just need to multiply this one more time by 60 because there are 60 minutes in the hour. So this is going to give us the difference in hours between those two days. And in this case, it is 13 hours. And again, that's how we can set up such a counter that should do it for the timestamps. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next one.